아, 야, 이집 잘한다. 응? There's a spider there, a crucifix spider. It does have some poison, poison in it, uh, but not enough really to uh, to harm. It might just give a little nip. And so much of survival is about opportunistic hunting, and this is edible. This vast landscape is typical of the outback in North Australia. I've been going just literally five minutes. I'm just drenched in sweat already. I thought it was pretty hot at the top of these cliffs. But what I had up there at least was, you know, a bit of a breeze. Uh, but down here, I'll tell you, it's just boiling, boiling, and it's like I'm now entering these hot plains, and it feels a bit like I'm out of the furnace, but definitely entering the fire. Down here, it's unbearably humid. Temperatures in the outback of Australia have been known to reach up to 57 degrees Celsius. That's over 130 degrees Fahrenheit. It's unbelievably hot. And the most important part of you to keep cool is your head. I need a hat to reduce the risk of overheating. I could use my T-shirt, but I need that to keep the sun off my body. All I have left are my boxer shorts. Water on, hat on, some sort of protection. I'm ready to go. But my next problem is water. I only have the water I brought with me, and that's not going to last a day. I'm going to need to resort to extreme measures to survive. The only thing I can do is to drink my own pee, and I'm expecting it to be pretty horrible. But I need to keep those fluids going in. She... Oh. <sighs> God, there's no getting away from it. <clears throat> that really is pretty horrible. It's like warm and it's salty. Not, not my favourite. <laughs> Urine is actually 95% water and it's sterile when fresh. But drink it sooner rather than later as it's a breeding ground for bacteria. <laughs> Hear that? Thunder. Oh, it's amazing, you know, sun. I tell you, it's going to be rain within a few hours. It's all moving this way. Out here in the wet season, the intense humidity and the tropical cyclones can lead to sudden thunderstorms. You can see those dark clouds, and over here, the blue stuff that's just moved. And that is all heading my way. Yeah, I need to get off this rock now and make camp. With storms come rain, and in the Kimberley, almost three foot of rain has been known to fall in only nine hours, and that can lead to treacherous flash floods. I'm gonna feel that wind blowing straight towards me. And yeah, it's really starting to pour now. I need to find a shelter of some sort. And all of this wall is gonna offer me some sort of protection. My plan is to build an Aboriginal shelter. The Aborigines use whatever is at hand to do this. Sticks for the framework, ivy for cordage, and bunches of leaves make perfect roofing and bedding. And that's where the 100% humidity has gone straight up in the air, and now they're pouring down. And this is a wet season, Kimberley, Northern Australia. That's why I was building a bed. This five minutes ago was completely dry. And look, now a foot of water. And if I just tried to build a shelter on the ground, that's what I'd be sleeping in. And do you know the amazing thing is? Tomorrow, it will be all bone dry again by lunchtime. But look at that, you see that? Just pouring off this sandy outcrop. It might well just stop raining in five minutes' time, and all I've had to drink so well today is this urine. So, 
I want to fill this up. This is just like manna from heaven. That's so nice. Come on, Ray! I think the feeling is when it suddenly rains is it brings brings like fresh hope, you know? And certainly there are times where it's just so dry and so hot. You think, how is it possible just to sustain life here? And the answer is when it rains. I'm going to start early to help avoid the 125 degree heat and humidity. I'm following a river downstream. As I head further downstream, the banks are wider and there are fewer rocks, which makes my journey easier. But as the landscape changes, I'm faced with new dangers. Everything's just changing now. Look, the weather's getting worse, the wind's picking up. But also, this river is really widening, uh, which means it's prime crocodile territory. There are two types of crocodiles in Australia. Saltwater crocodiles are the man-eaters and they tend to stay near the coast. So far, I'm only seeing freshwater ones. Hey, look, 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 there you go. There's a freshwater crocodile, 20 meters away. Let's see if we can get him a little bit closer. He's only a small one. There you go, look, look. These freshwater crocs are fast. They can run up to 10 miles an hour in short bursts. So you've got to keep your distance. See what they like here, all these shallow pools that they're just basking in. We've got quite a lot of these pools around us, guys. Let's just keep Freshies are clearly identified by their long, thin snouts. There's another, they're all over the place. I never want to find myself between a croc and the water. However, as I move downstream, I'm more likely to run into saltwater crocodiles. And at this time of year, they often head upstream, away from their usual coastal habitat. It's their breeding season, and that makes them even more aggressive. See that? Look. Saltwater crocodile. You'll be all right at this distance. Now these guys are the ones you want to watch out for. If he took me, he'd drag me into the water, death roll, and then rip me apart. And the chance of surviving a saltwater crocodile attack in deep water are almost nil. Salties have broad, round noses and are considered to be Australia's most dangerous animal. They're capable of biting with a force of one ton per square inch. And scientists believe that's even stronger than a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This area, though, should be safe, because I'm seeing other animals, like the Brolga, a type of crane, and the iconic Wallaby. But it's just like everything around here. It's quicker than me, it's smarter than me, just better at surviving than me. Away from the river means once again I'm at the mercy of the searing heat and I'm with a limited supply of water. Wow, look at that! Woo! That's what I've been hoping for, running water. Now I feel like I'm entering a new phase of my journey. I joke not when I say it is searingly hot here and this water is just God sent. Oh. Aborigines believe that the rainbow serpent made the rivers as he traveled across the land and that serpent is a symbol for both the creative and destructive forces of nature. These river gorges are testimony to that power. Where there is water, there is life, and not all of it is friendly. Whoa! Look at this! He could be dangerous, but he could also be my dinner. Here you, you come, there you come. We just leave his head on the ground. Uh, they're always calmest. I've only got the head on the ground like that. But this is, yeah, this is a pretty common snake in Australia. And, here you go, just get his head. Yeah, and one thing that no shortage of in Australia are snakes. In fact, 
I think it's something like 21 of the 25 most poisonous snakes in the world are actually in Australia. This isn't one of the poisonous ones. This is one I can eat. In these conditions, food will go off within just half a day. So keeping it alive makes the most sense. It's getting late in the day now and I've got food. I've got water here, and it'd be a good time to think about uh, finding some shelter. But over there, it looks like a bit of a ledge. Now I've got a safe place to rest, I can kill my dinner. And the easiest way to do this is to swing the snake through the air, smashing its head against the rocks. It's quick, and it's painless. I've gutted and I've skinned the snake, and I've got it cooking just on a little, like a skewer. And I just can't wait to eat this. It's going to be really good protein, but I know, snake, this is going to taste delicious. All snakes in the world are edible, but make sure you don't eat the guts or the head, which contains the poison sacs. It's also important to cook the meat thoroughly, as it can contain tongueworm. This can cause vomiting and, in the worst cases, death. And actually, that's just delicious. It's kind of Definitely very chickeny. Some people say the snake tastes like chicken. But I don't know what sort of chicken they're eating. It's bony, sinewy. Not very like chicken. But good. And this is actually how the Aboriginals would hunt. You know, they'd, they'd take what the land would give them and no more. And the way it's been the same for me, you know came across the snake and that's given me just enough to keep going and keep moving. Is that all?